Hi everyone, my name is Marcus, and in this presentation I will talk about infant calibration and the features that we have in Toby Grow Lab to help you conduct uh, infant calibration with good results. So before talking about the features in Grow Lab, I'd like to start with saying a couple of words about uh, what calibration is and why it's important. So uh, an eye tracker uses a mathematical model in order to calculate gaze point. So calculating where on the screen uh, the participant is looking. Uh, and this model, it accounts for individual variation in the shape and the geometry of the eye. And during calibration, uh, the model fine tunes its parameters in order to achieve a more accurate gaze point. So basically, it uh, takes into account the individual participants' uh, shape and geometry of the eye and uses that information in order to have as accurate as possible uh, of a calculation. So in essence, uh, what calibration does is that it influences the quality of your data. And the more accurate uh, calibration, you will have better data quality. And uh, there's been uh, studies suggesting that as much as 50% of participants recruited uh, in infant studies do not provide uh, data for the final analysis. Uh, and there are, of course, many reasons for why that this might be the case, but one of them is uh, problems with calibration. So if we can achieve more accurate calibration, we will also have more participants that provide usable data in our studies. Uh, so, what are some of the challenges when calibrating infants specifically? Uh, one of the challenges comes with positioning and movements. So, in order to have a, a good calibration, it's important that the participant is correctly positioned and that it sits relatively still uh, during calibration. And this is, of course, a challenge with an infant that might uh, move around or sit in the parent's lap while we conduct the calibration. Uh, another challenge is that it's very difficult, for obvious reasons, to give instructions to infants. So we might want to have a participant uh, look at a particular place on the screen during calibration, and it's uh, very difficult to tell an infant that it's supposed to look at a specific location. Uh, it's also the case that the visual acuity of a young infant is uh, a bit worse than it is for uh, adults uh, or older children. Uh, admittedly, it uh, develops quite quickly during the first year of life, but it's still the case that we need to take this into account uh, during calibration, such that we don't select stimulus that are very small and perhaps not distinguishable by uh, the infant. And finally, and perhaps the biggest challenge uh, for conducting infant calibration uh, comes to attention. Uh, infants have a limited attention span, uh, and this makes it difficult both to keep their attention to specific stimulus targets, but also during the entire stimulus uh, procedure. Um, and this might influence the quality of the calibration. So what are the, some of the um, uh, measures that we can take in order to mitigate these challenges? Uh, one uh, thing we can do in order to improve infant calibration is to use an eye tracker with a large track box. So the track box is the uh, volume of 3D space that the eye tracker, in which the eye tracker can capture the uh, eyes of the participant. So of course, if we have uh, more wiggle room, so to speak, uh, where the infant can move a little bit and the eye tracker can still pick up on, on the eyes, uh, the easier it will be to uh, conduct the infant calibration. Uh, we should also seek something where we can have support for correct positioning. So being able to uh, in the software, see that we have positioned uh, the infant at the correct distance and that its position within the track box will help us uh, conduct a more accurate calibration. And with respect to the uh, challenges of attention, mm -hmm. it's important to be able to customize uh, calibration for the specific group that we are uh, running our study on. So, for example, the number of calibration points might be the case that if we have younger infants, we can only use few uh, calibration points. Uh, and if we have a bit older infants, we can use more calibration points. We might want to change uh, the calibration stimulus, such that it's uh, attention getting for the specific group that we're uh, testing. And it might also be good for us uh, to be able to toggle on and off validation 
uh, such that we can make the elevation um, procedure a bit uh, shorter if needed. Uh, and finally, it's also important that we have some kind of procedural workflow uh, to help keep infant's attention towards the screen during calibration uh, and possibly recalibration. So if calibration on a specific point is not good enough, we might want to recalibrate it and again. And then, of course, we need to be able to uh, keep the attention of the infant towards the screen during this procedure. So uh, let's move over to uh, ProLab and see how what features we have in place in ProLab that can help you um, conduct the calibration. So now we uh, have moved into uh, to ProLab and I uh, it up and I will create a new uh, screen project. And when uh, coming into the project the designer uh, and here you can see that the timeline is already populated with a timeline object which is the eye tracker calibration uh, and there's a lot of different uh, customizations that can be done to uh, the eye tracker calibration and they are available here in the properties panel uh, and two uh, calibration targets that have been around in Colab for a long time are the point and video uh, I will not talk to uh, so much about them today, uh, but instead I will show you a new feature that we added recently, which will aid you uh, a lot in uh, calibration, and that is the uh, resizing uh, video feature. So with the resizing video, instead of showing uh, individual uh, stimuli for each of the calibration points, we now have the option to show a video which is shown on the entire screen, and which animates and resizes to each calibration point uh, when the researcher presses spacebar. So this is a feature that will help you a lot in order to keep infant attention towards the screen during the entire calibration process. Uh, and for uh, this demonstration, I will choose to only show uh, two number two calibration targets, uh, and you have the option of showing five or nine. And this, of course, depends on uh, the age group that you're running and uh, the attention span of that age group. I will also choose here to toggle off uh, validation. So validation is part of the validation procedure uh, and by turning it off uh, we uh, shorten the procedure uh, a little bit which might be good for infants but of course if you have an age group that can sit through it, uh, validation gives you extra information about how well uh, your calibration procedure performs. So uh, in the um, resizing video uh, calibration target, uh, I now have a video here. Uh, if it's not uh, available when you open ProLab, you can download the video that we provide for you, or you can add a video from your hard drive uh, that uh, you, you created yourself. Uh, there are two settings uh, for this uh, animation. So we can choose to animate it fast, medium and slow. Basically, the animation takes half a second, one and a half or three seconds to um, complete. Uh, and this, of course, depends on the age group that you are uh, calibrating uh, and how quickly they can follow the animation. So you will need to try this out during uh, piloting of your study. <laughs> And we also have uh, a possibility to change the minimum size of uh, the uh, elevation point uh, from one, two, and six uh, degree, uh, visual degrees. And again, this depends on the age group that you are calibrating. So if you are calibrating uh, very young infants, you might need a larger uh, minimum size than if you're calibrating uh, toddlers or uh, older children. So let's move over to the recorder uh, and see how this uh, resizing video looks when we are calibrating. So now we move over to the recorder and we are uh, ready to calibration. Uh, and one thing that I can really advise you uh, when running infant calibrations, running infants, is to have a webcam uh, installed on your system. Uh, this makes it possible to add a participant camera uh, to your recording uh, in which you can uh, keep track of your infant uh, during the calibration procedure to see whether it's keeping its attention towards the screen and then select your position. So please, if you 
have the possibility to have a participant camera to guide you uh, and explain uh, the difference with it. I will remove it here for, for this demonstration. So in order to conduct uh, a recording, we need to select a participant, and we're now ready to um, run a calibration procedure. And for this procedure, I have a two monitor system set up. And uh, in that case, you will have one uh, moderator screen and one participant screen. And I'll show you why that makes it a little bit easier to calibrate the system. So I will press start recording here. And what you see now is the moderator screen. So on the moderator screen, you get information uh, uh, regarding how the event is positioned. Uh, and uh, the distance, of course, uh, to the microphone. So uh, but we also have a participant screen, uh, which gives similar information. And this might be useful if you need to go to the infant when it's seated on the parent's lap in order to possibly reposition the eye tracker to make sure that the uh, infant's head is in the track box and that it's seated at the correct distance uh, from the microphone. So I will switch back to the moderator screen and I will start calibration now. So in the calibration uh, or in the moderator uh, view now, we have information about, again, how the uh, position, also about uh, the uh, points that will be calibrated. Uh, and as you can see, my gaze points are supported because I'm looking at two screens. But we can also see here that this is the next point that is going to be calibrated, the one uh, down on the right. And it says that if I press space, it can calibrate. So let's move over to see what the participant is, is seeing. And this is the participant screen. And here you can see that the animation is playing over the entire screen. And this is something completely new. Uh, for this demonstration, I've turned off the sound. But if you have sound in your video, it will be played. Uh, also, uh, it helps to get so once you have uh, made sure that the infant is looking at the screen, you can press space, and the video will resize to uh, the point that it's been calibrated, and then resize back to uh, keep playing uh, until you press uh, space again. And if you look at the moderator screen, we now see that uh, we have the next point in line to be calibrated indicated, so that we know what is going to happen in the animation. The video keeps on playing for the infant, for the participant. When we press space, it resizes to the next calibration. And importantly here, uh, now that we have finished the calibration procedure, if we go to the moderator screen, uh, in a short while we can see that the animation keeps on playing. So while you evaluate how well the calibration went, uh, the infant is still seeing uh, the the screen, which of course is helpful if it's the case that you need to recalibrate points. So looking back and forth at different screens here, you can see my calibration was not so good. So here I might want to recalibrate, and I can choose to do that by recalibrating the points that I'm interested in calibrating. Uh, and when I feel ready, I can continue, uh, or I can stop the recording and return. So these were some of the features that we have in place now in uh, the lab uh, in order to help you with infant calibration. So just to wrap this up, uh, we'll talk about infant calibration in the protocol lab. And uh, as you've seen, uh, infant calibration can be really challenging. Uh, in protocol lab, we now provide a range of tools that can help mitigate uh, these challenges and these tools can help improve the quality uh, data in studies with the infants. Thank you.